yes you know what's up um we don't do the, the do the intro until we get enough people in here so everybody please share this make this go viral let's have a lot of people in here tonight i hear we might get a special phone call as well and uh <laughs> somebody has a burn to pick with us or me probably me about the last podcast so let's see what happens share this we're not gonna go to, we're not gonna get in this till we get 25 people we're at 17 right now oh, we're, getting, How, we're getting there levels levels how's everybody's levels am i coming through clear for everybody am i what's up christian how does my sound sound <laughs> how does my sound sound yeah i get people complaining about my levels i'm trying to figure them out what's up pete how are you how's my sound how's wally my, wally you need to get a light in front of you you're gonna have to get a ring light you're really dark am i dark get, yeah all right you i'll, I'll get, get a ring that light. Uh... Oh, well, I got darker than I was before when that happened. Yeah. All right. We got 25 guys in here. So you know what? We got to hit that um that intro. We're gonna so bring the light. We're, we're going to start this podcast. How are you, man? What's I, wasn't going? Talk, I wasn't talking about Team Wolf, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, is this G.I. Joe Hotline? Yeah, I better shower, though, before I get ringworm, man. I just got out of the gym. <laughs> this is a place where you, a racer, mechanic, rookie, or RC racing fan can call up and speak your mind, express your thoughts, ask questions, or just get some shit off your chest. I'm looking at the Cadillac of anal beads next to my truck, and I'm like, this just looks bad. We may not agree with you. You're doing the whole disclaimer thing wrong. But we will listen. Hey, Wally, that, that's one pretty thick hat you got. You got to hook a brother up in Canada. Join your host, Lefty the Great, and co-host, Wally Bills. Hit us up on the NNRC hotline. 1-424-414-6672. And let's talk RC. Nitro is the glory. Buddy Buggy pays the bills! Woo! All right, Wally, you that looks a lot better. That looks better. I found the light. Yes, yes. What's up, everybody? Hey, welcome to the NNRC hotline. We got Wally back tonight. We're gonna be talking about his DNC, his recent moves king of the streets all that type of stuff but before i go on any further i have to you know say thank you to all of the nnrc squad around the world for tuning in don't worry episode 116 is dropping tomorrow or later on this evening actually we'll be up on youtube later on tomorrow because i still have to edit that and um shout out to all you guys man around the world that make this possible and shout out to all the patrons on patreon that support us hey you know we can't do this without you guys either so thank you for all the love if you wish to be a patreon on a patron on patreon all the links that we talk about are in the written description of this podcast. Shout out to Mayako. Wow, well, the cat's out of the bag, Wally. Uh, we'll, yep. We are going to talk about that a little bit more, but uh, Mayako is title sponsor of the podcast. New sponsor for the podcast, TNR Fuels. I announced it this week on the um, on this podcast, but I guess we get to see this before that. So thank you to Chris and TNR Fuels for coming on. Really appreciate that. Great people. Beach RC, of course. Wally and I are both a part of Beach RC Nation. Techno RC, JQ Racing, my JQ Racing family all around the world. Techno RC, oh man, they're gonna be. Um, they got a squad going to Lone Star this weekend. It's gonna be an interesting race down there in Texas. So we're gonna be watching that carefully. Sun City RC Raceway, the SCRC crew. They actually have the TNR race coming up there in, I think it's the 25th to the 28th of March. So shout out to those guys. Good to see that they're gonna get a race there and everybody that's going to that. Papa Willis Traction Tonic. You know, if you want to get some power to the ground, check out Papa Willis Traction Tonic. Racecraft USA. I got my hat from Chase and them guys. Um, they're killing it. Uh, I see Cole Ogden's on the team. Go get your command module, get your G blocks, get your pits all pitted out, looking great. My boy Wally Bills right here, making big moves, um, but yeah. still doing the regular, you know, still rewiring cars and doing builds and all that stuff too. So don't forget to show him some love. Go cut yourself a Wally Bills hat and send them a car to build or get a car to build for yourself and we'll say hello to caitlin because she's here too what's up caitlin she can't hear us but um 
She'll say what's up later. Thing. Oh, yeah, she can. I do. <laughs> uh, she's on a delay. But, and of course, RCGP, House of RC, who just released their app, and JQ Threads. Thank you to all the sponsors. Everybody, if you guys can show the sponsors some love, uh, it shows the podcast some love. And thank you. 26th to 28th. And also, shout out to Rowan the Barbarian. He's up late. He's over in the UK. It's like 1.30 there, and he's going to be our... Our, our producer tonight and happy belated birthday to him and happy birthday to salty joe his birthday is tomorrow and that's my boy and you know he reminded me today so good old salty joe good old salty joe he still wants yeah. a wally builds hat no so wally what's up dude just just doing the things always busy doing something um uh, pretty pretty been uh pretty solidly busy since we got back from dnc so it's having a little bit of a madhouse, but hey, we're catching back up and things are going, getting back to normal. Yes, and you've been hitting the mountain bike a lot too, so that's good to see, <laughs> you know, you're, you're getting those health goals in check, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the, the collarbone's still intact, so that's, I guess we're, at, we're off to a good start. But uh, yeah, I mean, just trying to not be super lazy anymore. I kind of got away from it when all, I started getting busier. Uh, it kind of just automatically goes, you run out of time and you're like, oh, well, I haven't really ridden my mountain bike in a year or I haven't gone to the gym in months. So, uh, it's been nice to kind of switch it back and just get up earlier and get onto, um, those things beforehand. So Sweet. hopefully we can continue and get better. Oh, I'm sorry. Happy birthday to D70 racing. It's his birthday today too. And, um, what's up Renzo? Good to see you racing again. Salty Joe's in your house um yeah so we haven't really talked you did dnc uh you had a you you know you launched your new business venture i guess we can call, say it you know we knew we kind of like i said the cat's out of the bag about mayako so i know people's gonna ask you questions about this so i said all right let's uh let's talk about this because this was big news for you at dnc uh you finally came up with the wally builds mayako team and yep. the video was released just before that with your involvement in it so um, I guess first I want to say, like, talk us through Wally builds Mayako and your and your role with Mayako. So I guess the first thing um, I'll be like Wally builds has kind of worked as like a subcontractor for Mayako. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be running a lot of the service center stuff. So whether it's online at the track, uh, over email, we'll be taking we'll be at the end of that line when you need it when you have a question about something or if you need help. The cool thing about the Mayako service, though, isn't just it's not just going to be when the customer has a problem. It's going to be like, well, we're going to keep, we're going to talk to you. We're going to want to know what you're thinking, what you found with the car. Um, we just want to like make sure we're going to be on like a, we're going to talk like weekly, if not daily. Like we're going to be talking. We always want to talk to you. We want to figure out um, if you've had problems with the car, if there's something that you would like to see. Uh, Anything that you can tell us about the car or any of your experience with the car, we want to hear that. We're going to be checking it with you, with our customers to make sure that they get the best experience overall with, with the Mayako brand. So I think that's going to be a big thing that's going to be different. Uh, it really hasn't been done that way. Usually it's just a, hey, if you contact, like if you have a question, contact us, we'll answer you, mm -hmm. but not really chasing the, after the, their customers. They're not really going after them to make a point to say hey we're right. here to help you if you need something let us know gotcha that kind of that kind of deal is what i think is going to be huge for the rc industry because i don't think that's ever been done anywhere else so i think no. it's going to be pretty big and that's going to be done via discord i believe yes yes that'll yeah. be done through the discord app um it's i've been using it uh it takes a little bit to get used to getting used to to try and figure out where everything's at but it's very, very helpful and it's very organized. Everything is super easy to work with. Um, really, I think it's actually a, the, probably the best way to do customer service in my opinion. Okay, that's cool. Um, we did have one quick question. Um, I haven't heard anything about this and I don't know if you have, do we know how much membership will cost? I believe that will be announced shortly. Uh, that has not come out yet. Okay, sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. What's up, EKJ24? What's up, Corey? How you guys doing? Sir Terps a lot. That's I like that name. <laughs> um, what's up, dude? 
Yeah, we got a Discord for the podcast too. Rowan actually hooked it up, but we haven't used it yet. So um, I just wanted to take a look at this because you kind of launched this uh, in... Um, hey, Rowan, if you can, can you bring up some of the pictures? I want the first picture from Wally. Uh, when I, the, the one on the hay bale from 2019, please, Rowan. Oh, man. Can you bring that up? Uh, and then we're going to go through the pictures because we have to talk about this. Oh, man. We got to go back to 2019. Yes, because you were so sad. Um, if Rowan actually, hears me, but... Uh, pretty what sure. 2020 sorry 2020 no uh, the dnc dnc happened in 2020 yes the silver state did. didn't happen in 2020 okay so here he goes with rowan with you so uh, sad right her oh man so sad I so bad I, I watched you live i actually took a picture of you doing this and i was like yeah. oh man wally is so sad wasn't a good day no not at all not at all not at all he was contemplating oh, yeah. life just completely overweight just destroyed my just had a horrible run in truggy probably just not but, a good time but bring black up and other, white i know <laughs> but i don't know what you was thinking right now but it wasn't good things like i say that well let's bring up the happy pictures from this dnc and um one year, one year difference yeah it's good to see this you came out swinging looking all factory um you 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 know you you went an in intermediate you tq yeah yeah Except that no NNRC logo is on there, but that's fine. Um, Working on that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's the other pictures? I want to see the factory tent. Um, Wally builds factory uh, Mayako tent because that looked pretty badass, especially at night. Oh, yeah. At night, it was really, really, really cool, I thought. Yes, man. Yeah, I love that it. one right there. Yeah. It was actually funny it. because I was all like, I was talking to Shelby. And I'm like, hey. When I get started, because Shelby Parker was pitting with us, mm -hmm. and um, I, I at that time I had to go back to Huntington Beach. That was on Tuesday. That was actually the day before when the whole practice day started. But Shelby and um, Jordan uh, Gleckler were still wrenching. I was like, "Hey, you guys, here's the keys. Lock up when you're done. Um, let me know how the lights work. Cause I just bought them off Amazon. I don't know how they're gonna work." And then <laughs> he sent me. Like later that night, he sent me. The, I just checked it. Like, hey, I hope everything's going good. Like, you guys good? He's like, oh yeah, everything's cool. Check out this photo I got of your tent. And I was like, that's oh, badass. That looks really cool. So the lights yeah. that I got on Amazon, they don't have a cover on the top. Okay. They're just two four foot lights side by side, and it's open. So the lights all the way around, and it lights it lights up the white in the tent. Got you. So it actually worked out even better than I thought it was going to. Is that a twenty by ten tent right there? That's a 10 by 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Awesome, man. Yeah. I can't wait to see it in, um, in full view, in full view. So <clears throat> how was the reception there, uh, at DNC? We wasn't there, so we couldn't really tell, uh, what was, I know you probably had a lot of questions because people have been wondering what you're going to do. So what was the general reception with what's what you're, what you're doing? Uh, a lot of it was kind of like, if, at first, it started out like, wh who's Mayako? Like, what is this? Right. I don't even know what this is. And I was like, oh, it's an eight-scale brand. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, cool. Like, okay. Like, and then they kind of like looked into it, and they would come back to the town. Like, oh, this actually seems like a pretty cool deal. It's all different and everything. So for the most part, it was pretty pretty mm -hmm. positive about everything. And there wasn't really any negative stuff. Um, you have the people that are going to like make jokes and be of like, course. oh. Uh, but I mean – for the people that were actually kind of like interested and really, um, really kind of wanted to do it, it right? But it was positive. There wasn't really any negative comments going that far. Going I, about that, I I kind of say it like this. I say, hey man, if you get it, you you get it, or you don't. Like, I'm sorry. It, I'm not, I explain to people, and I'm just like. Hey, we have to wait and see how things work. So, but definitely, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of companies taking, doing different things here soon too, because honestly, I say it all the time, the business model that RC has created is collapsing upon itself. So the companies yeah. have to do something here soon. Yeah, I definitely have to make a little bit of a change, a little more effort to uh, take care of the customers, not just go out for dollar signs. I think that's, it's easy to do that when there's not a lot of money, like, in the grand scheme of things there's not right. a lot of money in the industry so everyone's trying to get their part of it and as much as they can so you kind of sacrifice um the support side and that's honestly that's the key to making people want to race your use your brand and actually want to be part of the brand so i think, people I think the way that my is kind of right right they want to have the, 
I don't know if it's necessarily a title, but they want to have like they they mean something to the brand yes. that they're running. They don't want to just be like another number, another dollar sign that just comes through. And I think that's where my Akio is going to pick up on that. And I think that's where it's going to improve that aspect of the industry. I agree. Uh, also, I saw you made an announcement about looking for teammates for or apl applicate applicants for the, the Wally Builds team. I just mm -hmm. kind of wanted to know how it's structured. I know you're going for like a smaller team. Like you also had a junior position that's filled. Uh, I just wanted to wanted you to run by that so in case somebody was interested and and they wanted to join you or whatnot so just explain to people how the wally builds team is structured and whatnot so the whole thing that we're kind of shooting for is a smaller team that i and a couple other people that i will be working with as per i'll have mechanics basically that'll work with me mm -hmm. um and they'll be able to take care of everybody and make sure that everyone is taken care of i don't want to have a massive team and then i focus on four or five people but let's say it's out of ten i focus on five people in the last five that may not be winning or may not be doing as good as the other five are kind of left in the dust so i think being able to take three people on mm -hmm. um will we'll be able to help them we'll get we'll make them better we'll be able to specialize with their stuff and we'll know kind of like more of a relationship with like yes. how a supercross uh mechanic works Gotcha. Um, you'll know. Like, I mean, I've I've done this for years with Justin Myerson. Mm -hmm. um, just not really on a team because we were both sponsored by Associated. I was French format. Right. I wasn't going to race myself. And through all that, we won a lot of races. We did a lot. Of, we did. I think I took him and made him, or I got him to go from like the average mid pack guy that didn't really know how to set up his car, didn't really know what lines to hit and stuff like that. He had some background because he did motocross. Right. But Sometimes you got to fine tune all that to make it fit the RC world. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were able to do. And we made him, we, we got a lot of wins for him. He, he did a lot of wins in carpet. Uh, we've had some really good finishes in nitro. Um, I mean, his first race out, I, I threw him in the silver state. I was like, Hey, you want to run nitro? Mm -hmm. See if you, if you can get a car, I'll rent, I'll help wrench for you. I'll help get you dialed in. Um, and I'll fit for you. He's like, all right, sounds good. Yeah. I think he ended up first run at silver state. His first year running a nitro car finished third in sportsman. So awesome. He was pretty pumped on it. And, I th and then he's just been getting better and better. I mean, now, now we go to the track. We went, we went to Thunder Alley last Saturday and we we're kind of doing like, a, I guess you'd call them like, um, scrimmage, I guess, just going on the track and uh, just kind of battling each other and kind of pushing each other to go faster and faster. And I think more of that kind of practice is what him and I personally both need. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's really easy to get going on your own setup and your own pace. And you're like, Oh, I feel pretty good. I'm going really good. And then race time comes and you're out to lunch. Cause you're mm -hmm. running your pace, but everyone's doing this pace. And you didn't even know you just like, you thought you were going good, but it wasn't showing it. But when you have someone to push you on the track and vice versa and follow and how to pass, like you get more out of your practice session rather than just being out there by yourself, kind of hoping that you're doing pretty good. I agree. I agree. Um, real quick, DNC. So you ran intermediate, you TQ'd, you know, you're running the JQ car, the JQ guys were excited and you ran into your main and I kind of knew right off the bat, like I thought it was like when you hit the hay, hay bale, but you said your car was just off. Uh, let's go through those emotions real quick because you, your car was good in the night and during qualifying. Right. And I really think not, you're not running Saturday and then you know pretty much all day sunday really affected you you know I, I tell people you have to run three classes at this race obviously you couldn't do that right yeah so obviously with wrenching uh doing the wrenching thing on the on the days that weren't nitro buggy um there wasn't really time for me to even run any buggy or trade class so i pretty much ran every other day so we went wednesday for practice we got two runs on that and then I didn't run any time set till from the last practice to my first qualifier. And then the seating around the track was still pretty smooth. Everything was pretty good. I didn't really put anything. I didn't put any like real hot laps in. Mm -hmm. um, but we were making improvements on every on the car the whole time. I was talking with JQ and the guys in the in the group chat and we kind of started getting more towards what I thought would be good. Right. And what they were kind of going back and forth with that and then um q1 hits 
And I was like, okay, the car was pretty good. It just needs a little bit more stability in the rear. I could feel as it come out of the corner, the rear just kind of wants to squat and kind of hang there. And then uh, a lot of actually what the idea originally came from, and then I had it confirmed by JQ. Um, I was making a change to Ryan Reese's car because he was, we were all, we were in the same class. He was a race before me. And when mm -hmm. we came back after our first round, he's like, all the HV guys are adding more kick up to the front. And I was like, all right, like that should help it go through the bumps better. Um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to try on my car. So I talked with Shelby while I was there and he's like, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. He went out and tried it. I ended up liking it. So uh, after the first qualifier, I made a total of three changes. It was that added more kick up, added more anti squat to get the car to be a little bit, to have a little more stiffer drive. And then I also stood the shocks up uh, one out from center on the rear shock tower. Mm -hmm. And that's when Q2 happened and I TQ'd that one. And then I was like, okay, the car feels really good. I know it's going to get colder. It might have been a little soft. That's what people were saying around the pits. But they're like, I mean, you went fast with it. So I would probably leave it. So for Q3, I just stuck with it and didn't change a thing, cleaned it up, prepped it, ready to go. Uh, Q3 went down. It went, I mean, I had a pretty good run. I had a couple mistakes and still was able to TQ. So knowing all this knowledge, like, okay, the car was really good in the night with this oil package and everything was solid. Okay, I'm not going to change anything. And uh, I was called it done. And I went on and went and did all Reese's cars, back to mountain tires with Caitlin. Uh, really just focused on everything else. Didn't even touch my car Saturday mm -hmm. um, until the evening. I tore my car down a little bit. So kind of get ready to prep it on Sunday because we had all day to do it. Started doing that, just built the setup back up to where um, I had to run it in Q3. And I was like, okay, this will be good. But the problem was that I didn't take into consideration is that, yeah, but the oil is going to be right for the weather for a track that was smoother. Mm. So okay. that's where the mistake kind of happened. I didn't take in consideration of the track being a day and a half, a day and a half rougher than it, what it was in right. Q3. So – uh, even when I ran the warm up, it was still warmer outside. So I was like, okay, like it feels pretty good. I'm going to leave it. I don't really think there's any changes. It, it was a little springy. So I was like, all right, it'll be thick. It'll thicken up to where I need it. So I'm thinking like in my head, like this thing's going to be ready to go. And then I get yeah. out there for like the warm up laps in the main. And I'm like, oh, this is you not, got cement this is there, not dude. it. You got this cement is not it. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's even, even after the warm up, it had B mains and some longer aim, some like sportsmen and 40 plus A mains. So it had, even more time to blow out some more and awesome just, just, just not gonna awesome. put that just gonna put that in the bank for next time you no know. <laughs> hey it's, it's gonna be a similar good, it's gonna be a similar idea to silver state because we're gonna do the same exact wrenching thing mm -hmm. um and then run one class so it's gonna be back to running every other day so I was keep bummed. that I keep was that like, in the back of the mind like, for that one last dnc with a jq car probably unless you know we get somebody there next year that runs it and mm -hmm. i wanted to go with a bang but such is life man all good thank you for doing the tq and the, and the guys are rooting for you double ones, double ones. there you go 11. I, got, I didn't just get one one i got two ones there you go <laughs> what's up zach what's up clean freak in the house how you guys doing clean works check out my boy zach thompson and get some clean works there, um, we got to pay some bills ourselves real quick, and then we're going to talk about um, King of the Street. So, hey, you know what? Let's pay some bills. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. Awesome. Thank you, BeachRC. Uh, they have been a big supporter of the podcast check them out if you guys can brick and mortar hobby shop they have um you know a track everything online shop you need it they have it there's an affiliate link here in the podcast if you can use it it helps us out and then ask them for some uh and an rc decals and they'll put it in your in your order so use the affiliate link it helps the podcast out and thank you beach rc all right so wally 
we was talking about this and we was talking about this and I was, this was part of coming to DNC was to go to Vegas and go to King of the Streets. And man, mm -hmm. I really am super bummed when I saw the, when I saw that race and like how much pe fun people were having and the atmosphere yeah. there, I was like, <sighs> I was just like, oh man, I can't believe I'm not going to be there. But man um what an awesome race maybe we'll get rowan if you could bring up the final race because it was only two seconds but i just want to say congratulations to tyler zavadil and rc drag talk his wife koi uh shout out to sean rusin i know how hard these guys worked to do this and i thought this was awesome uh for those who haven't seen it this is something this this is booming in rc right now it's the no prep scene this was the last yeah. race uh, the, the pink cars, pink, uh, Clint, uh, Clay, Clay, Clay Keats, and I can't remember this guy's name, Jacob leader, Jacob leader. So these guys raced nine times, I believe to get her or well, mm -hmm. he had to race. Yeah. Nine yeah, times. Yeah. Eight, eight times to get there. Nine for the final. Wow. This is how quick this race is. Watch it. That's it. I was actually, and that's actually like. Out of all the races I was watching, because we were, I was watching the live stream a little bit here and there, right. and you would just see like some people that would just pull the trigger, hope for the best, and just bank it off the K rail as much as they can. I'm like, yeah, these ones know. actually look like they went straight and actually drove like a real drag car, and that's that's pretty cool. Yes, um, I I, I thought this was such a great event. I mean, the atmosphere with all the vendors and stuff. It had like that trail scale type of vibe, and everybody was having fun. It was at Speed Vegas, which I thought was cool, right next to where you can rent exotic cars and whatnot. Eighteen thousand dollars, dude! That guy won eighteen k. I don't know how nervous he was, but he must have been. And I know, I know Clay. I know okay. Clay personally, and he's. I don't even think he was nervous. He was probably just like, "I'm just having fun with my daughter and just having a great time." Is Winning he an off-road racer? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. wired up a couple of cars for him in the past. You know what, man? I know I'm probably going to get a lot of slack for this, but I definitely think that the off-road racers have a have an advantage in these races I because agree. I know this is hard to do, but there's it's also at a very hobbyist level, you you know, and people just came there to have fun. I saw one guy got red lighted like right off the bat. You know, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this guy came here and he's gone, but that's rules." That's yeah. rules, and they they went by the rules, and I thought the event, I thought that was awesome, and I thought it was great for RC, and the people that I thought was going to do bad, like I thought Tim Smith was going to be good, and then he like he wasn't as good, and then my buddy Dibs, who I thought was who had one of the fastest car cars, he kind of went out in his second round. Sean made it, made it pretty far, but man, I just thought that that was such a great event. It was. Um, I think like almost I want it to be longer. Like, how can we give these guys more run time or practice time? But I guess that's the rules, eh? That's the rule. That's how it goes. I mean, it's like drag racing. You don't really get a second chance. You're you're in. You're in until you lose. <laughs> I mean, it goes against everything we preach about. Like, oh, we want more run time for this little part of our day. But man, these people had so much fun. And I think uh we as the off-road people can have a look at maybe how the crowd was. We need to get back to showing off what we have. And but I know we don't why we don't do it now because we don't have spectators, but man, it's good to see the vendors out and just incredible. Like, you know what I mean? I thought the vibe was just so awesome and we missed that from from Check out the comment right here. This is actually kind of a cool <laughs> stat that Carl just put in. He said he almost made one thousand dollars a second. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. That's that's actually pretty cool though. What's up, Carl? <laughs> How you doing? But man, that dude went home with 18k and um just awesome. No, we no, I am definitely going to make a drag car. I don't know what it's gonna be. I see T Losi's what out there is now. Mm -hmm. So I think this is where we're gonna see the rivalry start. I think this is where we're gonna see it. I think we're gonna oh, I see I think so for sure. I think it's gonna I think the A the old AE and uh TLR or low C rivalry is going to fire back up in the form of drag racing. I think so. Well, Maybe, I think and also like to be a little bit off topic, but that ignite RC truck is uh, the gas truck. Oh yes. Oh yes. Um, sorry. I didn't, I didn't know that it was coming out, but now that there's a TLR one, I'm pretty excited that I made the switch and I get to run that still. You know, 
I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, off topic. That's a really great. We talked yeah. about it on the podcast. He he sent me sneak pictures and I leaked it out there for him before DNC. And yeah, I, I think that was cool. Uh, I think the drag racing stuff is going to really bring back that the A low C rivalry. I mean, it's going to be more, but in the form of like Ford versus Chevy, not like yes, we're better yes. than you type of thing. It's going to be more like an actual full scale right. racing stuff. Right. I think we're going to see. What's up, Dennis Wilson? How you doing, man? Good to see you. What's up, Richard Moore? WCRC is racing this weekend, people. Sorry. Had to throw that out. True old school type track. Uh, I think it's great. I hope I hope we don't ruin it as the RC industry likes to do. Um, I hope we keep it fun. It's great for hobbyists. I think. I think as better, I and I, I hate to say this, I think as better drivers get in it, it's going to probably have to be put, I think they're going to have to break it down and put rules in, into things. Because, I mean, people say, oh, you can drive them straight. Well, it's not, it's obvious you can't drive them straight because we saw many people. Not, they're not easy. Right, do donuts <laughs> and stuff. So you have to have some sort of skill to do this and set up your car and your ESC and all that type of stuff. But, man, it's so amazing to think that this is boom from when I met Tyler last year at DNC sean and and all these guys and they were telling me about this race and he, it was like yeah the winner's gonna take him three thousand dollars and look 18k so awesome so congratulations to those guys no preps awesome we're gonna build one i don't know maybe it might be a low one we'll see what happens um uh but i definitely think i want to be at this race next year and i want to be a part of it so yeah i think yeah. i'm gonna do the same yeah, look, he says, are you ready for me to call RC Drag Talk? Sure, dude, we're going to have you call in. I'm going to actually open up the lines here. And um, you know what, Rowan, while, you, while I do that, can we take some viewer questions, please? Uh, yeah, just Wally, if he can put up the viewer questions, you can see them. And we can go from there. Viewer <clears throat> questions. They can be on the screen? Yeah, put them on the screen, Rowan. Oh, okay. What Sorry, motor guys, ESC was he running? Uh, Live RC did a post on it, uh, so I can find it real fast for you guys. I think I shared it today. Somebody in the chat should be able to. Uh, I think it's McClam. I want to say. Yeah, it was I believe McClam. it was too. Let me check. I, I got the list McClam. right here. So the motor was a Reedy 3.5. Uh, the ESC was the McLaren DRK. He was running a Gen Zace battery with a Savox servo. Uh, the chassis was a, um, a B, uh, Mark Vine bullet chassis with uh, associated suspension and drive shafts, uh, associated three gear transmission, B6.2 shocks. Uh, the, the kits, uh, the Mark Veen, Vine, is that Vine or Veen? Uh, front tower, SC6.2 rear tower, custom work springs. Uh, front tire, DE racing accelerator, rear tire, the Proline Reaction, belted slicks. There's a photo of it right there for you. Um, and the wheelie bar was the vanishing point one. He also used a Proline Chevy Corvette C7 Pro Mod body. So, I, I mean, that setup was pretty dialed. I mean, it looked, and it looks, honestly, looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, and I believe that, I believe that the, the other guy was running like a DR10, I believe. Uh, I think that's what I heard too. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, keep talking. I put in the wrong pin number. You know, I just mess things up. Oh, uh, come on, Keenan. How many times are you doing this? I should have it done, but it charges me each time I do it. <laughs> All right, we're connected. We're connected. All right. You know what? Before I do any further, I have to pay some more bills here, people, because this is brought to you by Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC. Excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. All right, so welcome to the hotline, the actual hotline. The call, call center is up. We're taking calls. We have a call already. I'm expecting a call from somebody today as well, but looks mm -hmm. like Tyler Zavado of RC Drag Talks here, and I hope he's going to talk. Of course, he's going to talk about King of the Streets. 
What's up, Tyler? What's happening, man? How you doing today? Dude, are you rec- have you recovered yet? No. I know you haven't. <laughs> no, I'm I, I'm still kind of uh like amazed at what me and the team pulled off, you know? Awesome, dude. I oh, yeah, I have heard sure. nothing but positive things about it. I I literally was watching it and just saying I was supposed to be there and I was just even more angry at myself. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Yeah, we definitely missed you out there. Uh, we would have liked to have you and uh, Nick out there with the show, you know, doing yeah. some interviews. That would have been cool. Yeah, well, the RC yeah, Hangout cool. was there. They did a good job. Um, I listened mm-hmm. to their podcast here yeah. the other day. Yeah, they did a great job. They tried to have me on there, and as soon as I hopped on and got the mic in front of my face, the uh, the track crew called me back up front to go help out, so I wasn't able to stay on there long. Wow. But uh, Sean filled in for me. You know you know how that goes. Yeah, man. You and the yep. team, they done a great job, man. Honestly. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, when are you guys going to build drag cars and you, come race with us? You know what? We was just talking about that, and... It's going to have to happen. I got my paint scheme all picked up. Oh, do you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once I get caught up with my stuff, I'm so far behind and everything. And then with bringing the Maako stuff in, it kind of mm-hmm. kind of slowed everything up a little bit more. So uh, hopefully I can get out there. I know my buddy, Matthew Willoughby, he's been messing with his low C car. And after looking at that, I want to build one of those up right now. So that's in the future. I just got to yeah. get the time to make it happen. Quick question, uh, Tyler. It's definitely a nice car. Um, I've been looking at that car quite a bit. Uh, the Losey car, they definitely built a nice platform to get started with. Oh, yeah? Is it? Not I heard me. it seems to be pretty good, ready to run. Is it? All right. I want to know. Is it faster than the DR10 out of the box, ready to run? Yeah, Think but so. it has like double the KV motor. Okay, that's so, what I thought. Right. Yeah, the motor was a lot that, higher you know, KV. So it's kind of hard kind of hard to compare them for box stock for box stock you mm-hmm. know but uh they do offer a roller say and the dr10 also comes as a kit you know so mm-hmm. for anybody on our level the the roller is probably the way to go because you're going to want to put your power plant in it you know that's what i wanted to ask you about um because i was listening to the rc hangout and i was listening to john schultz and he was talking about his car and he's like yeah i'm running a, a 3.5 tire motor and I'm trying to ease the power to it. It's too much power. And that got me thinking, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be, I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff. So my brain got thinking, wouldn't it be better to go to a lesser turn motor to have less power right off the bat? And wouldn't that, wouldn't you still get the same top end off that? Say if you went to like a 17, a 7.5 or 8.5, what's your opinion on that? A 3.5 so one. It pretty much depends on at that point it pretty much is depending on what esc you're using and Mm -hmm. what tunability you have right so if you're using you know say like a castle or a uh spectrum you know something along that line you're not going to have the same tuning as you would uh the mcclon or the Mm teakin you know so yeah there you're going to want the motor to come around you know gotcha but if you're say you're using you know the teakin or the mcclon the drag specific software now yeah you can do exactly what you're saying i mean there's guys running at ocrc with a a 13.5 turn motor with timing Mm -hmm. and they're putting down pretty similar times to what we're running with a 4.5 turn you know really yeah, all because, like you saying, you're, you're able to put the power to the ground mm-hmm. in less less slip. Right. Where the big horsepower motors, we have a lot more spin going down the track the whole way. Awesome. You know what else I liked? Rules. You had them. You didn't have many, but you you applied them to people. I felt so bad for the guy who like bumped his throttle and red lighted at the at the at the light, but that was the rule, and I get it. Yep. So I like that. And um, that's another thing we can learn from offer it. Like, you know, there's rules. Use them. Yeah. Stick to them. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, the whole point of doing a tech inspection and all that is to make sure everybody's on the same level playing field, you mm-hmm. know? And with with the no prep thing, tire prep has gone a little out of control. Mm-hmm. So a burnout is really the only way to regulate that. Okay. So, yeah, if they did a burnout on the line, that was a, a no-go. You were out. Okay. So, 
Um, the so just for clarification, the burnout is to what clean the tires off, I guess, from the from the compound and, and heat them up, correct? Yeah, it's to heat them up, which we all do anyway. Mm -hmm. We just had you do it uh, away from the line. That way, if you had excessive amount of sticky gotcha, on gotcha. your tires, you weren't affecting the road for everybody else. Got you, got you. But well, rules are rules, man. Which I'm pretty sure you 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 know from Papa Willie's. I mean, yeah. uh, not that that is going to affect anybody else on pavement, but when it comes to a dirt scene, if everybody's running a different prep, the the surface ends up being, you know, pretty different real quick you know yeah just real quick we have a couple of guys in her that probably are new to the channel uh nitro freak and rc we're actually talking about no prep drag racing they had this past week and um the winner it was held in las vegas and the winner won eighteen thousand dollars so this is the guy tyler he's mm -hmm. of rc drag talk and he was the person and his team were responsible for pulling this uh, putting this on so we have him on here to talk about it well he's calling in and we're going to talk about it real quick because we do have a few other calls to take as well here tyler so what's next nice. for you guys tyler man um so i can't really talk about it too much yet but let's just say me and sean are going to do something pretty big here at a race that nick will most likely be attending nice 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 that's going to be awesome. And I might be at so, that race too. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm up here in a couple months. Yeah. I might be there too. While your internet's getting fuzzy. Nice. But, and, um, uh oh. No, he's fine. Ooh, I'm fine. It's right. Wally who's fuzzy. So, yeah, man. I, I just is? thought this was really good for, yeah, you're going fuzzy. I thought this was really uh -oh. good for RC. Um, like I said, just the atmosphere oh, is man. what really got me. I really enjoyed, let me mute my Wally real quick. I really enjoyed um, the vendor atmosphere and all that type of stuff that they had. I thought that was great. I think we need to bring that back to off-road. And it just looked like people were just there to have a good time and race second. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah. Good job, man. Good job. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Like I said, we really just wish you guys could have made it out there for this one. I know. And I hopefully the next one will uh, fit everybody's schedule a little bit better. Yeah. And I know how much you worked into it worked to do this, you know, so you're good, Wally. You're good. You're good. Let me unmute you here. Oh yeah. Okay. It was, fix it? Uh, that fix it. Yeah. That it fix was it. a task, you know, I know, dude, I know. Well, you know what, dude, you done it. You made RC history. Thank you for your hard work. Um, we have a couple of more phone calls. You have to get through her and get some rest, man. And I know there's no rest for the weary. And let's talk about that other thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, and congratulations. Missing Link RC podcast. Check them out. They've dropped episode mm -hmm. four on Podbean. Check him and my buddy Sean Russell out. They'll probably have me on there one day when they're super famous and I'm nobody anymore. They'll be like, we need to have Lefty on there now. But no, I can't wait to get on you guys' podcast, no, man. We plan to get you on there real soon, dude. We plan to get you on there real soon. I know. I can't wait. I love so. doing on podcasts. But um, thank you nice. for all well, your support, for man. Shout out to ours, man. Thank you. And yeah, thanks for all your support. And you guys go have a good night, and I'll talk to you later. All right. You thank too. you. Bye bye. See ya. Yeah, man. Next year, we got to have cars ready. They're talking about having a, a one happening at PNB. Yeah, they have a straight away there. They have asphalt mm -hmm. there. So let's take this call. What's up, Joe? How are you? It's Savage Joe. Pretty good. How are you guys doing? How you doing, uh -huh. man? You sound tired. Oh, Thursday's my busy day at the gym, man. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Savage Joe I, of Ran Out of Talent podcast. Yeah. Tyler, he sounded tired, man. Yes. I imagine yeah. he's just ready to take a break from RC for a weekend. Yeah, vacation nah, weekend. See, things like that, though. So I went to INS, and I totally ate shit. Right. But that made me so much more hungry to get out there the next week. I should have taken a week off, <laughs> but nah. <laughs> Not you, dude. You never take weeks off. I did last week because it was my anniversary. Well, you had to. Well, you That's kind of a given. Fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm taking two weeks off in April because I have a grappling tournament and a fight. 
that's the only thing that stops your RC route. Um, real quick, I want to plug the podcast because I was on your podcast this week. So uh, check out Ran Out of Talent. I was their guest this week. We had some fun. And um, it's always fun when I get to go on somebody else's podcast. I love it. Oh, we had a blast. Yep. I got to check out that software you're talking about. Oh. I just, you know, I, I don't think about it until I set up my equipment the next time I do it. You know what I mean? I'll send it to you. Yeah, because I'm going to be doing cauliflower here Sunday, but not ran out of talent. So gotcha. Mm. I bring I bring all my stuff to the gym and <laughs> record there. And <laughs> you're insane, dude. So, do you have a question for Nick, well, uh, Joe? Do, yeah, yeah, I do. So you were with Associated and all that stuff for a while. Yep. I'm curious if you heard about the new Reedy SG four packs and who they're sourcing them from. Cause I bought them immediately mm -hmm. and I haven't tried them out yet, but I know they're not the intellect this time. Cause I got the newest of the new intellect and that's what the SG three is based off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know too much about that anymore. I mean, the last time that I was really in the loop of everything was back with like with the original, I think SG two is the last one that I saw or that I knew much okay. about. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I have too much info yeah. on that this time. Yeah, no, I'm spending a lot of my, so I want redemption from INS. So I'm going to Omaha for the spring champs. Okay. And I'm putting a stupid, I'm putting a stupid amount of money into a stock buggy that will probably be <laughs> irrelevant because they discontinued the chassis and they discontinued the front arms. They can come up with any excuse they like for that, but dude, come on, new car. Which uh, what car? B six two. Oh, you, you want a new? B6? Oh, I discontinued the hard arms. Right. Yeah. Well, the, there's talk in the hard arms, and they said they say they discontinued the chassis for how they're going to mount the servo. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, there's, I know from working there, there was a couple of funny things that they would do to make up a little bit of a story to kind of like cover up a different issue, but um, I don't really know what they yeah. could be changing on this one. All I know is I that the B6.2 and the great. B6.2D are out of stock, so it could be something's being changed. Right, right. So, but I'm just getting my stuff ready for that, even though, like I said, I'm going to need a new buggy here soon. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm excited for the summer and take my boy Nitro racing too. There we go. Yeah, that'll some fun. glory. Yeah. Right? Cool. Oh yeah. I I quit race directing. I just couldn't take the assholes anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> Joe, thank you for calling in, dude. What? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's great having you on. Thank you. Yeah, we got to do it again. We got to do it again. For sure and i'm going to send you the link for that that software uh remind me tomorrow please and i'll let you use my right, my stuff for a while hey real quick what up all right got you. you know how i said i always get shit out every week off my podcast uh-huh and ryan gets none right all right got shit really i got shit oh yeah uh, i'll have to pm me about it it's so <laughs> why am i not surprised if you world why am I not surprised? <laughs> but you know, you know what's funny? They say, "Oh, my friend sent me a link," but then they mention things like later on in the show. It's like, "Nah, you're listening. You're a fan, and you heard something you didn't like." <laughs> <laughs> cool, dude. Well, thank you for calling in, man. I appreciate it. And um, we got a couple more calls to take. And I thank you, man. Thanks for all your support. Sounds good. All right. Have a great night, guys. Bye bye. bye. You too. Bye. All right. We got Sean here. Sean Rusen. What's up, Sean? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Oh, cool, man. And once again, great job to you. I enjoyed your walkabouts. Uh, I know you was working your butt off there at the at the King of the Streets. So great, great job, and congratulations to you, man. Yeah. Awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Just trying to trying to keep the content flowing for everybody, you know? Yep. 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 So what's up? Yeah, I, I felt like uh, 
we were on our feet for me and Tyler were on our feet for well up for 22 hours on our feet I'm not too sure but yeah it was such a long day and uh I tell you what even as tired as we are we're ready to do it again <laughs> how much oh, coffee bet. did you drink <laughs> uh I was drinking coffee pretty much all day um they had a they had a a, a a van there that was serving up coffee and I was dub ordering double espresso shots pretty much all day. Oh, so wow. I was, I was, uh, well, well, well caffeinated. You would need it. You would need <laughs> it. You would need it. You would need it. Yeah. But well, great well, work we, to you guys. You know, we, it was, uh, I mean, we got there Thursday and I mean, we never really slept in any day. I mean, we were up early and running around like headless chickens from the get go, you know? So, uh, Sounds like any race that I go to. (laughs) I know exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) But yeah, um, I just really like I was telling Tyler, I really dug the atmosphere and your your pit walks actually really got that. And um, like I said, I was listening to the RC hangout. Those guys are pretty cool. And just man, I just can't wait to come out there and hang out with you guys and do some of this stuff. Uh, we can't wait to have you out as well. And uh, hopefully uh, you can make it to Silver State. We'll sh- we shall see. We shall see, Sean. But you know what, Sean? I got about two more people online here, and they've been waiting for a while. And I know you've been waiting for a while. Yeah. But I know you're working, too. Yep. Um, thank yeah, you, man. And I wanted to call in and say hi to you and Wally, and, and we'll get you on the podcast and yes. Wally, too, as well. Cool. And, Sounds good. Uh, and yeah, we'll have to talk about the low C car. I can I can give you lots of information on that guy when you guys are ready. Oh, sweet. So, sweet, I'm, probably sweet. Gonna, I'm probably gonna message you about that. Cause I want to get into that one. I think that sweet. might be the best way for me to do it. Yeah. Well, we can hook up, and I'll let you touch and run it and play with it and all that good stuff. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, so. I'm glad we're talking about RC cars right now. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> 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 well, it's always a pleasure, you guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show, and and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Cool, man. Thank you. Sounds Appreciate good. it. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye, Sean. Thanks a lot, dude. I like this guy's thinking. Hey, Lefty and Wally, great show, boys. All the best, legends. I like that guy. I'm liking that one. All right, two more. He's getting a Christmas card for sure. <laughs> good evening. You are live. Who am I talking with? This is B.J. Williams, and I've always wanted to say this. Long-time What's... listener, first-time caller. Oh, dude, you really do have a radio voice. <laughs> you really do have a radio <laughs> voice. You are too kind, Lef. You are too kind. You're... Lefty, you are too kind. You are too kind. Oh, but... What's but up? How are you guys doing tonight? We are good. Having fun. Not talking much. a little RC. Yeah. Cannot go wrong with that. Cannot go wrong with that. And so, Yeah. But my, I want to make mine pretty quick. But I was I was watching the uh, the DNC coverage over the weekend, which is outstanding, by the way. And I loved I loved your lives during during that, by the way. Thank Lefty, you. That was really awesome. Appreciate but it. But the thing, the, but watching the the the, uh, the pro buggy action over the weekend, I guess the the thing that I kept thinking about was with as well as Mayfield and a couple of guys are running is with the. While we haven't heard any word as to what's going on with the one eighth off road world at this point, but if they do go ahead and go off this year or even next year, who really is going to be the favorite for this? Because you have to think that with as well as he's been running the last few races, Mayfield's got to be right there in that top three to five guys who could probably win the whole world when they do happen. Um, you know what? I actually, Max and I answered this question today on the podcast that we release tomorrow, but I want to answer this because I know this is, I know you're big on the world. I, I, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to happen. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it. I think they're usually in locked. Well, was it last year? They're supposed October. To be at, yeah. Well, no, last year was supposed to be actually the end of August, I believe. Unfortunately, but I, if we was to have a, okay, so what are we doing? If we just have a world right now, or we just hypothetically or in, in October. Year. What are we talking? That's what we wanted to get clear. Well, first off, this year wouldn't be an eight scale world's year. No, but they would do it this year if there wasn't. Oh, they, okay, if there so, was going to be one, yeah. So, BJ, that's what I wanted to be clear. If we, if they had a world's right now at this very moment or a world's in October when they're supposed to have it, that's what I wanted to be clear with. You there, BJ? Well, well I mean, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. The thing that I'm curious about is if they even pushed the, the world to 2022. Mm-hmm. 
they're still a lot of these guys are probably still going to be at a very high level going into going into it because you've got you still got a lot of very good races here on the, on the docket for this year. You've got the PNB coming up in April. You've mm-hmm. got Silver State. You've got, mm-hmm. of course, the rest of the race time events as well. You've got more more nationals, which are going to be here in June, I think yeah, it is, up in Pennsylvania. So they're, they're probably at least, yeah, probably going to be at least, I would say, three or four guys from from the American side who are probably going to be right in that in, in that conversation. I mean, you okay. talk about Mayfield, probably Spencer Ritkin's going to be in there. But do you see, who do you think really is going to be a guy that's someone that's going to be watching, whether they run the world this year or even going to next year, which frankly, I think is, is the more likely scenario given the, the state of the world as it is. Uh, okay. I'm going to give my pick real quick. I'm yeah. going to say if it's American Mayfield right at the top right now, he's on a, he's on a different level right now. His race craft is impeccable, but he's not, uh, omnipotent, omnipotent little. I can't say the word properly, but he isn't all powerful as well. There's kinks in the armor and he even said it afterwards. My car was hard to drive, but I still made it. Uh, n- nobody really, they nobody really got up to push Mayfield at DNC. They got to him, but they didn't get across him. He just went a little bit further. So he has that awesome racecraft. But honestly, right now, if you was to throw people, I, and they all had equal practice, I still have to say, run a folk man. And that's just because I just know him from a personal level, and I've talked to him, and I and he's like. He may not be racing right now, but he's mentally racing these guys, man. I know he is. And he's studying them while he's building his house. And <laughs> I just think he has that mentality. It yeah. definitely will be Mayfield and and Ronafalk and then the other American. I man, we can't count out guys like like okay, we had a bad DNC, but Ty Tasman has done amazingly well at uh, all these worlds, the last couple of worlds. He's made podium the last few worlds, I believe, or four or six worlds. I can't remember exactly how I mean, many. He, he is- Tesman himself is a world champion in his own right. Yes. So. Yep. Yes, but he you know who lost that race in 2014? It was Mayfield. It was his race to win. He was out yep. front and he lost it. He broke. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. so that's the problem with the worlds. It's also a luck. Very uh, very luck. much luck because it's one race. That's why I prefer to see a, a world champion crowned over a series, but that's a whole different story. So I have to say yeah. Ronald and Mayfield, man, yeah. and then my dark horse, like never call out somebody like Tebow, Kev. And then on the European side, I I would put Robert Badier in there, but not no more because I just don't think he's at he can be, but we'll see. And um, I don't know, man. There's some fast Europeans over there. Yeah, David Angaro is somebody you would think about as yes, well. Yes, yes. But I haven't seen the thing with the Davide is he he's he struggled on American tracks so far. Yeah. He hasn't really lived up to his full potential on American tracks. I saw him at RCGP. I saw him at RCGP and I saw Cole Ogden, Kyle McBride and, and David Ronafal go at RCGP. And it was like, wow. And then Kanas, oh, amazing. So that's, but definitely Mayfield, man. I don't, but here's the thing. Like everybody thinks this is Mayfield's last couple of years. I think Mayfield's going to be that RC guy that's going to be competitive until his 40 something, you know? and I think we're going to see Mayfield able he, to win races over 40. He'll be podium races when he's 40 plus. Yeah. yeah Mayfield's one of those guys that you could probably see him could routinely being in that top three to five at a lot of the major races, probably into his forties and be one of those guys that could be running for 20 30, or 20, almost 30 for a good 20 plus years. I mean, you've got guys that were, very competitive well into their 30s into the 40s as well so mayfield is probably a guy who i would think that would be someone you would be looking to hear a lot from here going forward right just i just wanted to rep- p- p- reply to my buddy justin he says ongaro took fourth at the vegas worlds that's not really struggling it's not as dominant as he usually is at these races mm-hmm. and that's what i mean that, that he isn't running away with these races and and that I was honestly a DNC think, 2018 yeah, as well. 19, I think 19. Yeah. People like Rana Fox figured out how to beat him too. And it, mm-hmm. it's, you just got to get in front of him. And, and then he started, I mean, lots beat him the same way. Got out in front of him, wears out his tires. So, but we're talking about a 19 year old kid. He's got plenty of time. All these guys are young, like right. besides Mayfield and these guys. So, no, uh, I think Mayfield's definitely got probably the best shot at winning the world's here. Yeah. Um, the only area, the only thing that I kind of that kind of 
I mean, the, I think Amer- like the U.S. drivers alone have the best shot at winning a Worlds if there was going to be one within the next year or so. Mm-hmm. Mainly because they've been racing with each other. They're they're out there battling and all these different things. All the different European countries are kind of locked in their countries, and they're not really able to really like race together as much as they used to. So, yeah, everyone can be mentally preparing and doing their practicing, but until you're actually battling with the people that are, you're going to be like battling for a world, ti- a world title for, you don't know the pace really. And you, you could mm-hmm. think you're there, but you could probably miss it. I mean, it's, it's just kind of how it's even like how Supercross goes. Like you, you're doing all this training up to a- Anaheim one and you think you're the fastest person on the track. You'd really go to the test tracks and then you get there and you're battling for ninth. So it's, I think, I think the people that are mm-hmm. actively racing right now, like, how the people are in the U.S., right? Like uh, Cavalier, Rivkin, Mayfield. I think this would be a uh, a world that would be dominated by the U.S. just because they're in race form. They're yep. They haven't stopped really racing much. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple, a lot less time mm-hmm. um, off, t- a lot less off time than on time. So, I w- and then I would say Mayfield for sure. I would have to say Mayfield has yeah. has has, a, has this world's. I would agree with you, Wally. I think we will see you. It's I, I, I feel sorry for these Europeans over there. They're watching all the Americans mm-hmm. race. And then I know they want to race and you have to race to earn your craft. I mean, that's your, that's your craft, you know, and practice, practice, practice. Definitely. But uh, I definitely think Wally's right too. It would be a very heavily USA dominated main, I think. And, but I just think that the, I think the Europeans that can throw a monkey wrench in there right now would be Rana Falk, and I would have to say Ongaro because he is a, he is yeah. the current world champion. We can't call him out. And Boots. Boots, Boots always yeah. goes pretty good, too. He would be um, – I would say those three would probably be the in the battle for the win. See, this guy gets it. The Viking will return with a vengeance. Okay, yeah, Justin. He says, yeah, he was very young. He was 15 at the Vegas Worlds when he did that. He, he had an impressive drive, too. Mm-hmm. That track was horrible. BJ, we have two more calls, dude. Thank you for the question. I really, I really like your radio voice, dude. You wasn't lying. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> again, again, Lefty, you are way too kind. But thank, but glad for the opportunity. Thanks for, thanks for the time. And um, plug I'll Coastal RC. Listen. Coastal RC. That's your home track. Thank you. Thank you. That's where you go, and that's uh, Barry yes, Schimmel's track. Chesapeake, Virginia, home of the yeah, home of the Carpet on Road Nets next week. So we're we're getting ready for that. It's gonna be a great time. Awesome. Definitely want to check that out. A live Sounds RC. good. We will. Thank you. Will Appreciate do. it. Oh man, I wish we could have a world. All right, two more calls, and then that's it. We, what, what, we, what's up? I know who this is. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello. What's up? Hello. Oh, what's, how you doing, man? Yeah, is hey, this? Uh, my name's, uh... yeah, this is, uh, this is Eric Lerner. Right, that's what I thought it was. He was talking about race format. This is what he wanted to, he wanted to talk <laughs> about, Wally, so okay how you doing eric man um yeah let's let's tell wally about your race format you was talking to me about okay and hey uh thanks for having me on the show um kind of a newer to your podcast um first call um i don't know if my voice is impressive as the last guy but i'll do my best <laughs> um so uh, a couple of, I, i've honestly only been in racing for two or three years um started out doing some tenth scale stuff um, went to like kind of a local trophy race. Um, and I saw a 17, five, you know, we had like 17, five pro 17, five expert, 17, five privateer. And so I kind of made a suggestion to some people at the track there. I'm saying like, how, how come we have all these classes broken up? So why don't we just run 17, five, have things fall as they may. Um, into the main structure, but you can still give awards out for like the pros. You know, you can still give out awards for pro. You can still give out award for sportsman. You can give out um, intermediate award. Um, but essentially, I, I was just kind of laughed off. Um, and and I, I can understand maybe why that may not work in the tenth scale world, but in eighth scale. It's something I think that there's actually a possibility that that could do some good things. And, and so what I'm suggesting is no more 40 plus class, no more junior class, literally run nitro buggy. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. you can still award awards for the people that are, you know, under 16 or whatever the qualification is for junior. You can still award top eight uh, plaques on, you know, to the the 40 plus drivers, Mm -hmm. but it literally just depends on where you finish in nitro buggy. Yeah. No, I so that's get kind it. of taking on. That's kind of taking on how the desert racing is. Everyone's on the same clock, doing the same time, but within that one class or one heat, you would call it, I guess. There's ten different classes, and everyone scored. You can have an overall winner, which wins. Let's say, pro buggy winner was he won the whole thing, all hundred dry, all hundred entries, and then at right. finishing uh let's say 15th overall was your first intermediate driver so i, I kind of get how that could work um it might be a little confusing to some at first though, i think or or like i i suggested eric <clears throat> which they did for rcgp as well is basically no qualifying for juniors or or 40 plus mm-hmm. they took the top 12 they had, so it was 120 races. Well, it wasn't 100. They, they based everything on 125 races, right? So then you take the top five, uh, top 12 in that category for that were eligible for the junior class and the top, um, oh my gosh, the top 40, top 12, 40 plus. And then you give them each a 15 minute main. So there's no individual qualifying for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they don't get any extra track. T- well, they do kind of. But it's kind of, you know what I mean? They got a 15 minute main more, I, I think, and it's done before the semis or whatever. And I think if you're in the semis or whatnot, you can't run it. So it depends on now, where you're at. I can't is remember. Is Eric's exactly. idea just for qualifying? No, I think it's for his overall or race, is it correct? The whole thing? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about for, uh, you know, what I, my idea is literally for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You know, you, you, you know, and, and you could, you could still have, you could still have bump ups in the mains. Um, I would say you could still have the like triple a mains mm-hmm. for that top, you know, let, let's not even call it the a main. Let's call it the pro feature. Right. So you've got the pro feature, you still have an a main. So the, the last tier that don't make the pro feature they have on the last night of qualifying, the last race, they have a last chance qualifier where like the top three in that race get bumped into the triple A means of the feature. And then the rest of it just rolls through a simple, you know, A through whatever structure, um, you know, roll the top two people up from the lower um, main into the next main. And then, yeah, like I said, you know, I finish you know, the D main in seventh place. So, but I was the sixth fastest 40 plus guy. So I finished in sixth and 40 plus. Right. Right. So anyway, I get that. Yeah, I get so anyway, it. That's just my thought. I could actually, and, yeah. that could actually work. If, if that was actually like thought through thoroughly, that could actually work because it would, one, you would save time. Um, it would definitely save time and you would just score everybody accordingly. But You'd have to, the main thing would be sorting out how the classes are deciphered. So you'd be like, oh, well, I guess, I guess you would just do it. You just sign up as your normal classes and you just run yeah. it all in buggy. I believe, um, if I remember I correctly, to this. I believe this is how they used to do it back in the day. Uh, I, if, but they didn't have classes. So, but you used to get a trophy for your main, for your main. So if you finished first, second, or third in your, your DOC main, you still got a plaque. You know so I, don't think, I, mean? I don't think that's what he's saying. Though. I know, I, I know. I'm just trying to think. Oh, I know what he's saying. Yeah. I know what he's saying. He wants to um, basically, so where you finish, so if you sign up for Sportsman and you you just, yeah, I know, you're racing with everybody, yeah. but you finish, you're racing on your own clocks, similar to like uh, Le Mans, the 24-hour Le Mans where they have all right. the different classes and all that stuff. Yeah, I get where it. Everyone's, on, like, everyone's in the same heat right. or class, but there's level, the levels are all noted inside there. Exactly what Tyrone said. No RD will want to break that down and try to figure it yeah, out, that's... unfortunately. But it can be done. I think it, it can be, be done. done. I think there could be some thinking and modifying to make it work. I think it actually could could be something kind of cool. Sweet. Eric, where are you race to, by the way? Uh, uh, so I'm out of Des Moines, Iowa. Okay, Iowa. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool, sweet. All right, man. So the, I, I race with 
I race with the Fullers and nice. Underneck and Got it. Uh, uh, on on a very on a very amateur level. Also, okay. But well, you're surrounded by some fast dudes, and um, yeah. Thank you for reaching out to me, and thank you for calling in, man. Uh, you know what? We're always looking for format change. I think uh, JQ's got this whole new format he wants to wants people to look at and stuff too. So we just have to keep like hammering this through. Like things can be different, you know, and people will start <laughs> listening. So thanks mm-hmm. for the call, dude, and you have a good yep. evening. Yep. All right, guys. Hey, thanks. Have a good night. All right, bye bye. You too. But Ty says that U.S. Open has that open format. I'm gonna have to talk to Tim. Tim. I'm check Tim into that. Tim Lyons building his track. It's really good. I just I wanted to that. touch on Western Guard broke down. He did. Let's see, Wally, I get the comparison to SX, but there's a huge missing factor, a factor missing. The SX guys that don't put the work in the offseason, it's usually a car. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I know what you're saying about that. Like, there's really a cardio thing in the, uh, in the RC industry, but uh, there is being actively racing and at speed at an, on an active level versus falling off the pace a bit like it would be more of like how mayfield can hit the same corner exactly the same over and over and over again and maybe you can but now you're short out of 10 times where mayfield's doing 10 out of 10 you're now doing it 7 out of 10. so that's kind of what i was saying like not you're just not as sharp as you once Mm -hmm. were because obviously your eyes change um and i honestly i started to think that even physical exercise and just mental stuff could actually be a part of RC training. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to see just mentally feeling better could actually be better for it. I mean, the thing with the thing with actually making yourself better physically, there's no downside to it. So if it doesn't benefit my RC driving, it's yeah, going to benefit me in real life. So. You know who, who I'm interested to see race again? Mark Souza. He's lost a lot of yeah. weight. He looks good. Mm-hmm. And now he's got super confidence. So I right. think that's going to be good for his race, and I think it would actually be a good one to watch yeah. and see if this is uh if this is uh something that could be that could be coming something. Because well, what I mean, if, we could all what if one day, shape. what if that's what I'm saying? What if one day, like you get like, oh, you know what? If I want to race my RC car better, I got to get in shape. Yeah. Now you're the whole RC world is now in shape, and we're not. Dude, we're, it could be more serious. It could be something that could be. It could be a benefit to RC. That could be something that could. I aren't in Senna was one of the first Formula One drivers to start running and exercising and doing all that type of stuff. Before mm-hmm. guys didn't, you know, they didn't really exercise as much. So he got in to say, hey, if I get into shape, I can drive a car better. Well, that's physical, obviously. But um, yeah, yeah I definitely think being in shape helps. And just when you're in, in that type of mindset, you're so mentally tuned. So it yeah. has to affect your, your hand-eye coordination and stuff like that. Yeah, I cool. think so. great I think question. it also helps the mental too. Yeah, great question, Justin. Mm-hmm. All right, one more call, and we all know who this is, so we got to say what's up to him. Yo, what's up? Hello? What's up, man? How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. We had the last call for the night. What you want to say to everybody? What's up, Eric? Uh, um, I just want to say, um, um, looking up, um, I'm, yeah. Hey, um, your you prize know? is coming. This is being shipped out too. I talked to Beach RC. Your prize that you won. Ooh. Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, how do you- short course champ. He's gonna get some get a short course thing. I don't know what he's getting. <laughs> I can't remember. He says, "How are you, Nick?" Not too bad. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Hey, um, I'm um, I tried to pull back in a cheap shirt. A t-shirt of what? T-shirt? I'm a pop veteran now. I'm on the Tekken team. I couldn't understand you. Can you say it again? I didn't understand you. What time? I'm on a techno team. Oh, you're on the techno team. Okay. We on, of you course go. you're on the yeah. techno team. They put you on there officially? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to talk nice. to Matt. We can't. We can't have you can't have your likes on the on the techno team. I'm gonna have to talk hey, to hey, you. Hey, hey. You don't see the Daniel Ricardo like that. <laughs> oh, I'm only joking, man. Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Techno is a great team. I know you've been supporting them for a while. Yeah. Do you want to say something to everybody yeah. before we sign off? Because you're the last call for tonight. Uh, um, 
Okay, and your YouTube channel Live is? RC? What? And your YouTube channel? Because you have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. All right. Tell everybody your YouTube channel so they can go sub to you. Um, it's um, Eric Lundvall. Eric Lundvall. It's Lundvall. Eric Lundvall. L-U-N-G-D-A-L-L. Awesome. 89. Eric Lundvall, 89. Check him out. Yep. Give him a sub. Eric, thank you for calling, man. You have a good evening. Tell Wally you said goodbye. Uh, See you, buddy. Wally. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right, yep. Wally. I, th I think that's it for us tonight. We had a good show, an hour and 15 minutes. We have 55 people on at all time. Thank you for everybody to, who tuned in. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everybody. Remember, go to that YouTube channel, hit that sub, that like, and leave a comment or dislike, and uh, help that. I have to do the toe of Satan thing here. I think I have 95 more subs, and I got to do that. I don't know if I'm going to do it her or at home. I think I might do it at home if I get, uh, I might die or something. You never know. Oh, boy. What's up, oh, Jeremy Ken? Okay. Happy belated birthday, dude. Uh, thank you to everybody, the NNRC squad around the world. Thank you guys for everything that you do. Uh, thank you for supporting the podcast. Thank you to all the patrons on, on the patron. Appreciate that. Shout out to Mayako, TNR Fuels, JQ Racing, JQ Threads, Techno RC, Beach RC, my boy Wally Builds. Don't forget to show him some love. Sun City mm. RC Raceway, Manscaped.com. Don't forget to, you know, promo codes for that. Racecraft USA, RCGP, House of RC, Papa Willis Traction Tonic, and RCMX. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Wally, anybody you want to shout out before we get out of her? Uh, I mean, just want to say thank you to all my sponsors and everyone that kind of helped me out with the uh, the Wally Builds Factory Racing Team. Uh, it was something that we kind of wanted to put together and didn't really know if it was going to work, but we got a lot of people behind us now. Uh, we've, we've got Beach RC, Hobby Wing, Savox, um, TZO Tires. That's going to be something that's going to be coming out here in a little bit. Uh, Mayako, obviously, TLR for our 10 scale stuff. We're doing Racecraft. Because that command module is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure speed for uh, stock motors. JT bearings, ultimate engines, uh, Maxima racing oils, uh, action sports canopies. If you guys want an action sports canopy set up, like something similar to ours or something maybe a little bit less, uh, hit us up. We, we're a full dealer for them. Um, so we can get you guys dialed in with pretty much anything that is required. Like we got, we can do skirts, uh, walls, tents, uh, any, any event promo stuff uh, that you would need. And then also um, TNR Fields and Complex Inc. Complex Inc. is the guys that did the wrap on my trailer. Came out super rad. And then, uh, yeah, TNR Fields. Chris Nelson's fuel has been awesome. Like, runtime has been great. Um, the power is great. Engine looks perfect on the inside. So good stuff coming from all my sponsors. Really happy with the program this year and looking forward to Silver State and all the other races. Hey, D70, uh, best way to contact Wally, I did leave a link to his uh, website and Facebook or Instagram as well as a good way to contact him. And then him. Our, our latest email is uh, info at wbfactoryracing.com. Sweet. And uh, hey, Cody Taylor, hey, good to see you back. And, and, and I hope you're feeling better from that incident at DNC, man. And um, yeah. Good to see you back racing again. Have fun at TNR Race. Big tie. Have fun. Uh, thank you, everybody that tuned in. We're going to sign out her. And um, we're going to do this again her soon. I'm liking the live. So, hey, you know what? Nitro's the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. Caitlin's ready to go. Yep, and Wally is to too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hey, if you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Lefty and Wally and Caitlin out. 
Thank you for listening to the No Name RC podcast. We greatly appreciate all the support and love from you, the listeners. Without all of you, none of this is possible. Special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. If you wish to support the podcast further, you can at patreon.com forward slash NNRC podcast. As a patron, you will receive early releases, special content and patron only giveaways also please follow us on facebook instagram and our website www.nnrcpodcast.com remember nitro is the glory but e-buggy pays the bills if you aren't having fun it doesn't make sense and if you ain't grinding you're sliding lefty out Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory. so bad.